Any word about what's going on? No. The paper says it should wrap up today. Bill is afraid of it. Afraid of what? Of what the verdict might be. The man's guilty. How can anyone not see that? Who wouldn't want this animal behind bars? How do you know Ronald Deacon, Mrs. Weber? His mother and I have been friends for years. I've known Ronald ever since he was a little boy. Are you acquainted with anyone else who knows him? Oh, yes. Our whole circle of friends. Are you aware of his reputation in the community, Mrs. Weber? That is, before he was charged in this case. He has a wonderful reputation. Polite, friendly, unselfish. Everyone thinks he's the nicest young man. And is that your own personal opinion as well? It most certainly is. Thank you. You may cross-examine, counsel. Do you know any of the young women with whom Mr. Deacon socializes, Mrs. Weber? No. That's part of his private life. I wouldn't have any knowledge of that. Then you do admit, then, that Mr. Deacon does have a private life, one which he doesn't share with his mother's friends, that you and your friends naturally don't know anything about? Well, of course he does. Doesn't everyone? And you, being the good family friend that you are, don't pry into those private areas, do you, Mrs. Weber? I try not to. And neither do your friends, isn't that right? Not to my knowledge. We try to respect a person's privacy. I'm sure you do, ma'am. Thank you. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Yes, these will be fine. No changes? I don't think so. You must have a lot on your mind. How are things going with you and Bill Spencer? Where did that come from? Just asking. Any particular reason? Well, you could call it a friendly gesture. Towards me? We used to be friends. Is that what it was? All right, we were more than friends. Thanks. It felt that way to me. Especially since I don't invite my friends into my bedroom. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. You never did. Oh, don't tell me you're still bitter about that. Why are we dredging this up? I guess uh, I'm a man in transition. You know, reaching out. Transition? From one emotional involvement to uh, whatever comes next. You're not in transition, Rich. You're in love. Very much in love. How long has Mr. Deacon worked for you, Mr. Baker? A little over three years. In those three years, have you come to know people who know him? Other people who work in the store, a few of his friends, and of course the customers who come in contact with him. Have you heard his reputation among those people in the community in which he works prior to the charge in this case for being a peaceable and law-abiding citizen and for chastity and good morals? I have. What is that reputation? It's excellent. What is your own opinion of him? He's a fine young man. He's a good worker. And he's an honest employee. Thank you, Mr. Baker. You may cross. Mr. Baker, 
What have you heard your customers say about Mr. Deacon? He's a good salesman. He's honest. He makes a nice appearance. Any one of them ever talk to you about his sex life? <laughs> of course not. What do you mean, then, when you say that Mr. Deacon has a good reputation for chastity? Well, I don't know. No one has ever brought up anything bad against him. He keeps his private life very private? Exactly. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Baker. I have no further questions. Love has nothing to do with it. I see. You're just looking for another relationship in spite of the fact that you're still in love with Caroline. What else am I supposed to do? Is Ridge Forrester asking for romantic advice? Well, Caroline belongs to my brother, or haven't you noticed? Caroline belongs to no one but herself. Oh, excuse me, my liberated friend. But that's not the point. She happens to want my brother, not me. If you believe that, you're totally out of touch with reality. How do you know what she wants? I've seen her with you. Not in months, you haven't. Well, that doesn't matter. The look that she was wearing then isn't something that a few weeks or even a few months will change. What look? Oh, Rich. Don't ask me to spell it out for you. I didn't enjoy seeing it the first time. Well, that's all finished now. You haven't seen her recently. She happens to be wearing that, that look for my brother now. So you're just going to let her go? It's not the time to be messing with her mind. Well, if that's what you plan to do, mess with her mind, by all means, stay away from her. I was talking more along the lines of telling a woman how much you love and care for her. That's how you feel. Well, isn't it? How long have you known the defendant, Miss Pearson? We went to the same high school and college together. I guess I've known him for about 12 years. Do you know other people who know him? Friends from high school, college. Have you heard his reputation among these friends prior to the charge in this case for being a peaceable and law-abiding citizen and for chastity and good morals? It's excellent. And is that your own personal opinion as well? Most definitely. Your witness, Mr. Teller. Miss Pearson, have you ever dated Mr. Deacon? No, sir. Have you ever gone out with him socially? No. Just good friends? That's all. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Redirect. Miss Pearson, would you have liked to have dated the defendant? Yes. Why didn't you? Well, Ron never seemed interested in that kind of relationship with me. He was always very proper, a true gentleman. Thank you, Miss Pearson. That's all, Your Honor. You may step down, Miss Pearson. Call your next witness, Miss West. The defense rests, Your Honor. Anything further before we begin closing arguments? I was hoping we could begin closing arguments tomorrow morning, Your Honor. It's been a rather long session. For the first time during this case, I find myself agreeing with Mr. Talon. 
Well, I don't see any reason why we can't begin tomorrow morning. Be here at the usual time. Court's adjourned. What's up? I thought I'd drop by to see how things were going. <sighs> it's damn near gone. That's bad. No matter how you slice it, it's still one-on-one. -on -one. Caroline says force, Ron Deacon says consent. You couldn't break him? <sighs> I have never seen a witness like this guy. So cool, calculating, a consummate liar. <sighs> we're in trouble, Dave. I wouldn't say it to Caroline, but... Ron Deacon could easily go free. Jeff? Brooke, come on in. Hi. Hi. Jeff wanted to see me. How are you? OK. You? Hanging in there. Brooke. The reason I wanted to see you, uh, I thought you ought to know that things don't look good. What? Now, listen to me. I don't want Caroline to know about this, but I thought that you should, because it's going to be up to you to support her if this verdict goes the wrong way. How could it go the wrong way? He's obviously lying. Obvious to whom? Everyone knows that Ridge didn't dump Caroline. <laughs> and there is no way that she threw herself at Ridge, like Deacon says. My God, he made it sound like she tried to seduce him. How do you know it didn't happen that way? From what Caroline said. <laughs> Jeff, I know her. She's not like that. She isn't, Jeff. I don't question it, but I can't prove it either. Not on hearsay and conjecture, and that's what you're giving me. I need a witness with first-hand knowledge, someone who really knows what happened. Someone who can sit here and tell me in direct testimony that Ron Deacon is lying. Well, there are only two people that can do that, Caroline and Forrester. Caroline's out. She already told her side of it. What about Forrester? Oh, I don't know. From what I hear, those two haven't spoken in months. Well, I think he'd do it for Caroline. Do you agree, Brooke? He could also destroy this case if he's not careful. He'd be careful. You sure about that, Brooke? He loves Caroline. I'm sure about that. Well, hey, let's get him in here. Dave, you talk to him. You know him a whole lot better than I do. I don't want to. Not for this. Why not? Dave, you talk to him. You know how to help him with his statement. Aren't you going to do that? I've got a closing argument to prepare. Should I take along a subpoena? No. If he won't come voluntarily, I don't want him. Brooke, I'll give you a ride home. Let's go. See you.
The way I feel about Caroline is totally irrelevant. Typical, Reg. Feelings are about as important to you as the weather. Is that what you think? That I'm insensitive? Well, what am I supposed to do? Go over to the Logans and make a big scene? Give the neighbors something to talk about? That'd be real good for Caroline, wouldn't it? Just what she needs. She's involved in a rape trial, remember? Well, fine, fine. Don't see her. Stay miserable. You wear it so beautifully. Do you think this is fun for me? I think you're a fool. What the hell are you talking about? I know you're in pain. I know it because I've been in that kind of pain. I should be gloating since you're the one who caused it, and I'm not. Maybe I'm a fool, too. So go ahead. Do whatever you want. You don't deserve Caroline anyway. doing here we need to talk later it won't keep Forrester we have to talk now take your hand off me look if this is about Brooke Logan you might look, as well know it's got nothing to do with Brooke but what were you going to say about her? What's the difference, if that's not the reason you're here? You've been seeing her again? Oh, then it does involve Brooke? No. It's about Caroline Spencer. Caroline? Her trial's about over. I know that. What about Caroline? It doesn't look very good for her. You're not telling me that there's... That's right. I'm telling you she may lose the case. Lose it? How the hell can she lose it? Something's come up. What? What's come up? I can't tell you. You're going to tell me. How could this happen? This guy's so guilty, I could have tried the case myself. What kind of incompetent people you have in the DA's office, anyway? It's got nothing to do with the DA. Oh, come on, get off it. This case was cut and dry. You didn't even have to convince a jury. Don't be stupid. Rape cases are never cut and dry. Then why don't you tell me what the hell happened? All I can tell you is that one of their witnesses made some very damaging testimony. What did he say? I can't answer that. Why not? Because you're going to refute what he said. What? We need you to testify, Forrester. I can't tell you what the witness said. Or your testimony won't hold. The defense attorney will claim that I coached you. I don't get it. How can I refute something when I don't even know what it is? By telling the truth. About what? About your relationship with Caroline Spencer. You expect me to stand in court and talk about that? That's what we need. What you need? What, to embarrass the hell out of me? Look, this wasn't my idea. Well, whose idea was it? Your girlfriend's? Oh, you can tell Brooke Logan. Try again. It didn't work this time. You'd be doing this for Caroline. Or isn't her name in your little black book anymore? Now, how is this supposed to help Caroline? By refuting a very damaging lie about her. The story of our past, of our relationship, is supposed to do that? It might, depending on what you say. Oh, and I suppose the more sensational, the better, right? Look, rich boy, I could care less about you or your life with Caroline Spencer. So don't flatter yourself. I'm doing this to get a rapist off the street. You don't want to help? Well, that doesn't surprise me one damn bit. Hey, Reed! You've got a large chip on your shoulder, you know that? What if I ask you to stand up in public and spill out the details of you and Brooke Logan? Would you like that? No. But I'd do it for Brooke. It's the same reason I'm going to do it. For Caroline.
Come on in, let's talk.